Awesome. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flutter Dev Camp 2022 Web Edition. This is the fourth and last session of this amazing series. So I, I, I just wanted to say thank you to those of you who has talked all the way through, uh, from the beginning, who have joined every single one of the four sessions, uh, whether you guys have learned uh, uh, about Flutter Web, how to deploy your web applications, your Flutter Web applications, to Firebase hosting. It's been an amazing series. We've shared a bunch of your creations. You guys have done amazing work. So we hope uh, that you can continue uh, your journey as Flutter web developers, as published Flutter web developers uh, in, you know, in, in the days and months and years to come. So uh, just want to say thank you on behalf of the whole team. Uh, we have Kevin on deck in there. We have Linda also helping us out. Um, so thank you, everybody, from the whole organizing team, from GDG Lawrence, GDG Capital Region, uh, GDG Boston Android, and all the other GDGs helping us out. Thank you, everybody, for being part of this amazing session. So we're going to uh, proceed now. Again, remember, we said that this was a four-part Flutter event series. It was focused, it is still focused on Flutter Web, publishing your Flutter Web apps to Firebase Hosting. So in the four series, you can go back go back and watch the rest of the videos where we actually build a Flutter web app, build Flutter web apps. We showed your creations and then we were able to deploy to Firebase hosting. We talked about building you, your UIs uh, for Flutter web. We uh, also uh, deployed to Firebase hosting. Uh, Kevin was very gracious enough to help us out in, in, in showing us how to consume public APIs from your Flutter web apps. And today we're just gonna wrap up showing what you guys have uh, built for the past uh, four, se uh, four, uh, four sessions. And we're gonna wrap it up by just saying, preparing the application for prime time. I'm just gonna show you a couple of last things that you can do to polish your application and make it available online so that you know you have has a great presentation and whatnot. So we're gonna be uh, talking about that before wrapping up. So this is the last session, like I mentioned today, we're going to be doing a little showcase as always. We're going to go through some of the applications that you guys have built. Um, and, and that's it. So we're going to also be rewarding some of you who have completed the assignment, which was a Flutter web app deployed to Firebase hosting. Remember that initially we just did like a Hello World app and then we published it to Firebase. That was the initial assignment. But remember, you need to at least have something beyond that just, you know, uh, uh, the counter app in there to really qualify. It was good that you did it, but we need to make sure that you we've seen that you actually took advantage of uh, some of the techniques that we showed through the through the series, so that then you can build something cool and publish it out there uh, as a Flutter web app hosted in Firebase hosting. Uh, so again, these are your instructions and facilitators. I am Roman Jacquez. I am a Flutter GDE lead organizer at GDG Lawrence. Uh, I don't know if Lionel is in, in, on deck. And also Kevin, he's been also uh, an amazing organizer and helping us out with the session. Uh, Kevin, you want to say hi? Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the fourth session. As Roman had mentioned, this is amazing. Uh, these amazing session uh, during the fourth session. And hopefully you can enjoy the last session for today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And again, like I mentioned, this is not possible if we don't get if we don't get support from other GDGs and collaborating chapters such as uh, GDG Capital Region with their amazing host Linda Kovacs. She's been joining us in every single session. So kudos to you, Linda, for bringing your community over and helping us out with this session. Same thing with Elizabeth with, uh, from GDG Boston Android. She's been uh, sending our our uh, you know our love uh, her love and and her community over to join these sessions. So thanks to both of you. Uh, Linda, would you mind, uh, sorry to put you on the spot again, would you mind opening up your mic, just saying a few things for uh, the folks in, in attendance? Actually, by now I should be used to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Roman, Kevin, and uh, Elizabeth, and everyone who put up this event uh, for collaborating, for inviting us to collaborate with you and be uh, here to help everybody. And uh, I wish you good luck. And I'm so happy that we are 
going to do even the road to the Google Cloud certification together. So many other events to be all here together with the community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. And yeah, she reminded you again, we have such an amazing, uh, uh, you know, a group of of sessions and events coming up from the same communities that you see right now. A lot of exciting events, a lot of exciting content for you coming in the next couple of months. So please make sure to stay tuned, whether uh, via Cap uh, GDG Capital Region, GDG Boston Android, GDG Lawrence, all of you or all of us are going to be providing amazing content to continue elevating our community. So thank you everybody for your support. Let's continue. Uh, and of course, uh, there's the GDG uh, Slack channel. I believe the team is going to be dropping the links in the chat so that you can still, even beyond this session, you can still reach out to us and, um, and, and join the Slack channel, the Flutter Slack channel, so that we can help you out with your Flutter web applications. You have any concerns, you're stuck on anything, let us know, you know, in the, in the um, you know, as we see th that our availability, you know, we're there, you know, all the time, please let us know whether you're stuck on anything, we'll let you know and we'll help you out. So this is the Slack channel so that you can continue uh, reaching out to us. And of course, all these sessions are recorded, but the beauty of, being uh, present in this session is because you're gonna win a lot of cool things like you know raffles t-shirts uh, being in, in touch with the experts uh, about flutter web and and firebase and all of that and then uh interacting in a community and helping each other out but all these sessions are recorded and they will be posted on our youtube channel make sure to both subscribe and watch these recordings in there. Again, the beauty of being present is uh, being in this community-centric uh, activity. So thank you for those of you who have, uh, again, been attending and are present right now. So thank you, everybody. And of course, remember the goal of the series was to actually publish your first publicly available Flutter web application. We started building UIs. Now we uh, and then we were able to publish it to Firebase hosting. That way, your published uh, your published Flutter web apps were available for the whole world to see. So that is exactly the, that was exactly the goal of the series, and that's exactly what we're going to conclude in here. And just making sure that everybody accomplished the task at hand, which which was uh, build a simple Flutter web app. It doesn't have to be really complex, but at least it has to be beyond that counter app. So you still have time. In the remaining time, you can just go in there and try to wrap it up a little bit and then just republish so that then you qualify for the raffle, the, cer uh, the certificate of completion. We're going to, you know, give out, uh, give those out to those people who have completed uh, the sessions, uh, the, the, the assignment, have published, um, you know, have attended uh, most of our sessions. And of course, you know, you have a published Flutter web application in there. And you're going to also qualify for some of the raffles that we have today. And of course, you see, now we, we, we change the criteria. As long as you submit a Flutter web application, now, we, now you didn't have to attend all the four sessions. At least we wanted to make sure that you publish something meaningful and put it out there in the world. You qualify for the certificate of completion. That means you, at least you were able to, to be with us. You even consumed our content, uh, collaborated with the community, joined the Slack channel. You're going to get the certificate of completion for those of you who have published a Flutter web app. They have it public out there beyond that counter application. You're going to get a Flutter swag and, of course, a chance to enter the raffles from our sponsor in this series. So thank you. Thank you for those of you. And you still have time. That's what I'm saying. Beyond the simple uh, counter application, if you have something out there, uh, you know, something, you know, cool, even if it's simple, that's okay. Make sure that you have something in there so that then we can uh, provide you with your certificate of completion. And of course, make sure to submit your Flutter web app. You're going to get the certificate of completion for those of you who provide us with the link in this the form provided. And I'm pretty sure the team is going to be dropping the link in there. This is the form for you to submit the link of the Flutter web app that you have published. Make sure that you put your name and your email so that you can then get the certificate of completion, which you can use to post it on social media, on LinkedIn, or whatever from GDG Lawrence. It comes from GDG Lawrence as a token of our appreciation for you to have joined us throughout this four series, uh, this four series, uh, this four part series, and um, for being just awesome 
and learning with us about Flutter web app. So make sure to still submit. You still have time to submit. We still have two more hours to go. Make sure to submit uh, you know, while we uh, go through this uh, uh, session. And of course, we are more than pleased to announce that Flutterflow is also the sponsor for this event. Flutterflow is a web-based IDE and rapid prototyping tool that allows you to build Flutter applications in minutes. It's an amazing tool. You can just go to flutterflow.io. Right now, for those of you who, uh, who have completed the, um, the assignment, which is building a Flutter web application, and submitting submitting it to Firebase uh, hosting, you qualify to enter the Flutter Flow raffle. Make sure that you submit your application, make sure that you provide yours with your information, and you will qualify for the raffle on Flutter Flow accounts, which is the official sponsor for the Flutter Dev Camp 2022. So thank you, uh, Flutter Flow. And what are we gonna be raffling? Again, I can't stress it enough. It's the same form, the same form that you use to submit your, your Flutter web app, your published Flutter web app, we're gonna be using to draw the raffle. So today we're gonna be raffling one, uh, only one six month premium access and four one month premium access to Flutterflow. But you first need to make sure that you create a free account. So you go to flutterflow.io, you sign up, you create an account, it's very easy, just a couple of clicks, I can show you how to do it, it's very simple. You create a Flutterflow account and you submit the Flutter web application and that's it, you enter the raffle. Make sure that you have a Flutterflow IO account and you submit your Flutter web app and then you're all set. If you didn't create the Flutter the Flutterflow account, that's okay, we're gonna help you. But if you you know win the, the raffle, you need to have a Flutterflow account so that they can then uh, uh, flip that free account to a six month premium or those four one month premium access, okay? So we're gonna be doing that at the end of the session. So stay tuned, make sure we're gonna pick five lucky winners and you're gonna get the Flutterflow uh, premium accounts. And of course, for everybody, whether you completed uh, a Flutter web app or you're just here attending and being, you know, the, your awesome self. We have Flutter Dev Camp T-shirts, so we're gonna be raffling one more. The last one, we're gonna be raffling one Dev Camp T-shirt. You just make sure that you provide us with your email and the size, and we will contact you for shipping. So for those of you who are present in here at the end of the session, we're gonna be drawing a raffle for one Flutter Dev Camp T-shirt. If you didn't, if you if you also let's say submitted a Flutter web app and you you are still here you could also get it so you could definitely go home you know uh pack it with a lot of gifts so uh good luck to everybody make sure to stick all the way all the way till the end and whether you submit it or not you're gonna get a flood of left cam t-shirt just provide us with your information thank you let's uh continue and of course, remember, we just wanted to uh, recap on what we did during this Flutter Dev Camp. So we, uh, for those of you who, this is your, your fourth time joining, or this is your first time that you're actually watching this or just joined, remember from the beginning, we've been setting up folks on how to set up their local environment, optimized for Flutter web development. So we installed Flutter and, and, and for Windows or Mac, and there's the link. Also, it will be provided in the chat. Also, we uh, show you how to install Visual Studio Code, which is the preferred IDE. So we set up your environment for Flutter Web because it's the lowest barrier uh, to entry when it comes to becoming a Flutter developer. Because the Flutter Web, as soon as you install the Flutter framework, you don't have to install Xcode, you don't have to install Android Studio, you don't have to install any other dependencies. Just Chrome is enough for you to become a Flutter developer because you can immediately tap into, the, into Flutter's power just by tapping uh, the web. And of course, this uh, Flutter Dev Camp was focused on building your very own Flutter web application using uh, consuming publicly available RESTful APIs, implementing state management, doing cool animations, doing cool stuff. And of course, you were able to build like a UI layout for your, uh, your Flutter web application. And that's what we focused on. So I'm glad that everybody was able to um, you know, build applications and, and submit your, your own. So thank you, all of you. And of course, at the end, you needed to set up also uh, your Firebase account. Again, that is the reason for us to publish it. It's completely free. You don't have to pay anything to create a Firebase uh, project. And then to, to post and to publish your Flutter web app 
to Firebase hosting is also free. Only you need to be within the, the Spark, uh, the free tier, which is called Spark in the Firebase, in the, your Firebase console. And you can just submit any uh, web application, in this case, Flutter web app, and then you can just publish it to Firebase hosting within the limits, of course. And then you can just keep it in there forever. And then you can use that, um, you know, as, as, our, as your portfolio, as, you know, so a cool web app that you just wanted to show off to the world. The great thing about this is that you could you could use also the Firebase hosting, remember, to uh, publish your Flutter web app. And with the CLI, it's just a matter of one single click and your web app is already out there uh, available for the world with a, uh, uh, you know, with security by default using SSL um, and all of that. And it's an amazing resource for you to publish your Flutter web apps. So the two technologies discussed in this Flutter Dev Camp, we were doing Flutter, of course, remember this open source UI toolkit supported by Google that you can use to deploy to, to six distinct platforms and just using one single code base, which is Dart. And Firebase, which is a suite of serverless uh, services that you can uh, you know, use to build robust web applications and robust applications in general backed by the Google Cloud. So these were the two technologies that we focused on during this series and we were very uh you know very honored to have uh all of you learning about these two again just one more recap about what was what was flutter web we had like a couple of uh, twitter spaces also on how uh, uh you know discussing flutter web uh, clearing your your doubts about flutter web so what was it good for remember flutter web is good for those progressive web app experiences single page app experiences existing mobile uh, Flutter, uh, mobile applications in Flutter that you wanted to migrate to the web with certain exceptions, of course. But then Flutter is not good for stuff like a blog or like a SEO optimized HD, uh, HTML pages, um, you know, but you can actually embed Flutter inside of an iframe inside of another traditional web application. If you want more like an engaging, highly interactive user experience, you could use that, uh, you know, that, that's what Flutter web is for. And you can use that to embed it in other pages as well. So that is what web, Flutter web is good for and what is not good for. And again, the wrap up of this series, we're gonna be preparing your Flutter web application for prime time. Uh, if we do have chance, we can go over uh, other topics, but we wanted to make you and uh, be the star of the show. We wanted to showcase uh, your creations. We just wanted to wrap up one more item, which is just preparing the Flutter web app for prime time, changing the icon, making sure that you do change like the title and all of that, and that you have like a loading, a proper loading screen in there so that then you can, uh, um, you know, show it off to the, show it up to the world. Sorry. Uh, and of course, as we always do, we do a mini showcase. Those of you who are ready to show the progress, if you want to share what you're working on, uh, let's let's do that right now. You can submit your, your links or we can, with your permission, we can grab the links of the folks who have already submitted and let's see what they've done. Again, remember, we still have the chance to submit today. If you're still working on your app, you have, you know, you can do one minor tweak please go ahead and do it. Remember how easy it is. You just do Flutter, build web. You can specify the type of renderer, whether it's Canvas, Kit, or HTML. And then you just do Firebase deploy and you're done. I'm gonna show you also how the one that, I, that I've been building, how, how that one is coming out. And of course here, we just wanna get uh, give you feedback on your application, uh, address any blockers that you may be having. Last session was amazing because we were helping people out. So that, that was one of my most favorite sessions where uh, you know Kevin was helping us out. We were helping other people out. And that's uh, the reason why we're here, to serve you, to help you out, and to empower you as a Flutter web developer. So let me stop right now. What I'm gonna do is give a chance to any of you who want to submit, or I can, again, grab the list of submissions that we've had, and I can go through some of those if you wanna uh, share. Then we will also like to hear from you, like to tell us about your experience building that uh, Flutter web app, app uh, uh, application, uh, deploying it to Firebase. If, you, if you're if you here and you wanna share, that would be great. So uh, please let me know who would like to uh, share, uh, let's say your creation with any uh, with, with the group and we can just open up your mic and we just hear from you. So I'm just gonna give a chance real quick. Okay, for, for, 
we have the first one, uh, Mahendran. So Mahendran is sharing his application. Thank you so much, Mahendran, for being the first one. Uh, Linda or Kevin, can you help me uh, opening up Mahendran's mic so that then I'm going to show his application and he can uh, like maybe share a little bit of experience on what uh, what it was for him to build this Flutter web application. This is an amazing look, very looking uh, web uh, Flutter web application, Mahendran. Let me be honest with you. So let's open up uh, Mahendran's uh, mic and just hear from him about his experience building this Flutter web application and deploying it to Firebase hosting. Um, let me see this. Is his mic's open. Can Great. Give it a try. Yes, uh, Mahendran. So whenever you're ready. Yeah, I was going to say that. So this is what Mahendran built. So he has like a couple of links here. Like maybe he's gonna load. It loads his resume. He's probably show, he's gonna show projects in here and some of the contact information. But so far, the about me is looking really cool. Like uh, you see, like you can click. It goes to his Twitter. That's awesome. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Flutter developer. That's amazing. And then look, you can click on other things. That's very good. You can go to Facebook. You can go to his LinkedIn. This is an amazing, this is an amazing, and this is actually the reason. One of the best experiences that I've seen. This is really good. Uh, and this is the reason why you do a Flutter web application. This is one of the cases that you can use to build a Flutter web application. Okay, now we have Mahendran. Mahendran, the floor is yours. Uh, you want to share your experiences building this? Uh, hi sir good morning uh, uh just i think i want to try it, uh, some web apps now this is my first uh, first experience in web app i also created more than mobile apps but first ex experience in flutter web app so uh, i tried to some uh, some fun so i tried to my portfolio web app so it is uh, useful, for, useful for me also i tried the animation the stacks and uh, the uh, link navigations and the page paginations. So using Twitter, it is uh, very useful for me. This was very well executed. I like that you use by default. I already can tell you that you used, for example, the uh, URL launcher because now you're able to link into other pages from here. That's amazing. You definitely use stacks. That was a very good uh, use. Any challenges that you faced while you were building this application? You found any challenges along the way? Yes, so the stacks, uh, stack on this, uh, my issue one that is, but I tried to fixing that issue or fix also. It looks good. It doesn't look like you had an issue. It looks like very good, very clean. Uh, where yeah. did you get inspiration to build this uh, Flutter web application? Uh, inspiration, uh, you know, uh, first time I attended uh, this event. Mm -hmm. So I want to think the, get idea from this, uh, this, this time also. Very good. Very good. Uh, this is an amazing execution, Mahendra, let me tell you. And you definitely, you of course, you qualify for the raffle, the Flutterflow raffle, and you already have your certificate of completion because you definitely went through all the sessions. You built something really cool, and we can just thank you enough for being part of our community. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for this, for this project, and thank you for sharing uh, uh, with us. So stick around. Uh, uh, you know, so that we can uh, give you your uh, the, the raffle item when you, uh, if you qualify. So good luck to you later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let, let's bring Mahendra down. Thank you, everybody. Let's see anybody else. As we have uh, Danai says, uh, Danai says, I only had a week since I managed to deploy. That's totally fine. Even if you have something simple in there, uh, that's pretty good. So let's bring Danai next. Uh, and, if, and let me tell you, your T-shirt is on its way. It's just that it's taking a little bit, but everybody who uh, want a T-shirt is getting it. So let's bring uh, the nice project now next. Let's bring it up. And I know, yeah, you definitely had a couple of issues. Are you saying that you had an issue with this thing? Come on, really? This looks amazing. <laughs> You're being, you were being really modest. Is this your Flutter web application? This is amazing. Come on. This is awesome. <laughs> And let's bring her up and let's talk. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to let you do the talking. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's a, it's built upon a template. Um, Perfect. it's not no, all it's my work. Um, and most of the buttons don't work at the moment, but, um, yeah, I mean, I've changed everything from the template, all, all the, uh, the color scheme, uh, all the graphics. Uh, so all the information is correct. 
Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> that's oh, me. This looks amazing because again, remember Flutter Web also allows you to bring, for example, like you can bring a template. Of course, you need to draw, you know, uh, inspiration from 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 ideas or components. So this is amazing. This is again another one of the reasons uh, for Flutter Web. These type of experiences, like a single page application, a portfolio type of web, uh, a web application, something that you can put out there in front of folks. Uh, so I'm going to ask you anyway, and I know you're going to be sharing it. What challenges did you face? <laughs> I know you're going to be sharing the ones that you had, but I would love to hear it from you. So was it? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Um, so one of them was a. Uh, obviously the, the, the deploying part um because i'm working um on a windows machine yeah. um we just realized that you need to define the renderer otherwise it's not not really working properly um so yeah that was the main one from there on um i just had to kind of understand them the structure of um of the dart language and flutter in general how it works um the firebase stuff were easier i would say um so yeah once you get like the um you know you, you get the the main idea it's it becomes a bit easier so integrating the template and then just trial and error from there on um so yeah i mean now the challenge is to just trying to connect all the buttons to <laughs> to the proper to, yeah but direct you to the proper thing you, you are on a great path uh on, you are off on a great start this is amazing i like how you personalized it how you make it yours how you change the the template you see even that already uh, says a lot about you that you're you know you're able to bring a template in and modify it and tweak it to your to your needs and make it very personal so i just want to say amazing execution or of course you qualify for the certificate of completion. Thank you for sticking uh, uh, with us throughout the whole series and also being very supportive of other folks in the chat. I know I saw that you were already even giving advice to other folks. So thank you very much for being here. This is an amazing execution. You see folks, this is the reason uh, why we wanted to create these type of events to share with everybody, showcase everybody, celebrate one another. So then I think- yeah, yeah, this is this is awesome. I really like it. Um, just one question follow up on your uh, uh, speaking about template and what sort of template that user maybe would like to share, you know, I, I'm familiar with Figma uh, or I think Woman had uh, also shown us you have to use XD. I'm just curious of whether you have to use uh, some kind of tool like this that I, men I mentioned. Uh, so, yeah, um, I found it, I don't remember exactly. I have on the bottom, I have the name of the creator uh, because I like to give credit to people. Um, yeah, sure. So, um, so yeah, that kind of direct me. I found it on a web page for Flutter templates, and I just cloned the repository from GitHub and just went from there on. Okay, but cool. I, I can okay. uh, add the link um, on the chat if you're interested. I'm sure the rest of the folks in, in, the, in the session will be interested in seeing that. That would be great. It is amazing. That's all I can say. And and of course, now you see the thing about I love about like Firebase and you and I like that you uh, your testimonial about like how easy it was. It was very simple. You created the project and then all you had to do is just continue deploying. It doesn't have to be only Flutter web. You could be any, any other type of web application that you want to deploy. But you see this uh, uh, about the security that Firebase gives you. You see like her web page, her web app is already secure. You see like it has SSL. And you get that already by default by adopting Firebase. And that gives the, uh, her users uh, a sense of security and that she's definitely taking, uh, 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 you know, security, um, you know, as, as, a, as a first citizen in her project. So, Danai, amazing execution. Thank you so much. Round of applause for her. Please, uh, 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 yeah, just accompany me to doing that and congratulating him. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have, uh, we have David. Uh, David Adevayo, uh, thank you again for, for being here with us. Let's uh, take a look again at his project. So let's just launch it right here. Nice. Oh, this is amazing. Very cool. Very cool. This is another one of those cases where you do like, a, a, again, like a portfolio. I love your portfolio, guys. This is exactly one of the best cases, like I mentioned, for Flutter Web. 
single page applications, portfolio type of experiences so that you can show, uh, showcase your skills. So David, can we bring him up so that he can speak about his project while we show it? Uh, go ahead, uh, David, the floor is yours. This looks very good. Uh, yeah, good, good morning. Enable his presenter mode. Good morning, David. How you doing? Yeah. yeah, I'm fine. Uh, so, Hello. what what was uh, so what was your what challenges did you face uh, during your building this uh, Flutter web application? Any challenges? I, this, I have the same issue with um, Diana's with the deployment, which I had to use uh, the render Canva kits, and also. I had an issue when I deploy. I do, I do, I did. I don't see my photo. I don't see my picture and some other assets that I had it. So I need to redeploy close to like three to four times before it came up. And also the animations and all. So I've not really had some routes to the buttons there. So they still are developing. So how to come up. And that, that, that's great. Like you, at least you have here, uh, you know, an initial, let's say, deployment. This is even great. Like uh, uh, you say that you still have other things to add, like, you know, cook up all the other uh, like navigation and whatnot. But this is a great start. You have an amazing foundation so that you can continue building your Flutter web application. But again, like I keep mentioning, this is the case for Flutter web app. Amazing experiences like this that you can build in Flutter. Then you can even just grab this make it into a mobile application if you want. This is pretty cool. So, uh, and I'm glad, and thank you for sharing. Like, I know that a few folks had a couple of issues, of course, uh, that I had a couple of those issues about like deploying, deploying the application. But once you just get it down to just fixing that issue, it's very, uh, it's all smooth sailing from there. Sorry about that, guys. It's just, it's just smooth, smooth sailing from there. Like I said, it's very, very, very easy, very, uh, very, very smooth actually. So thank you very much for sharing. This is an amazing experience. Uh, I hear, the, I see this button say hire me. So, hey, I'm trying to click, man, because I would hire you. This is an amazing experience. Thank you so much for sharing. This is a very cool uh, a project. So any, any you know, other feedback that you have from us, any uh, suggestions for anybody else? Uh, but other than that, this is an amazing, amazing project. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, David. So let's see if there's anybody else. Uh, we have, uh, so, so you say you just updated it right now. That's totally fine. Again, like I said, you can even do it right now. And if we see like any updates that you may have published, we will, we will show it for you. So thank you again, David. Let me bring now, uh, so, so let's try him. Let's bring him up. I'm going to click on your experience. And I like how you called it Roman Flutter Web Tuts. <laughs> That's awesome. But again, see, this is a very good start is beyond the, the, you know, the, the, what is it? The counter app. This is very good. See, you're already, uh, oh wait, I like that, that icon. Is this something that you're actually building uh, for real? Like the, uh, uh, EDU fund, uh, you know, help us student continue and, and doing like this thing. Is this something that you're actually uh, creating? Can we bring uh Sosu up and then he can, um, um, explain to us what his project will be about? Yes. So, uh, as uh, right now, I hadn't updated it. So right now, when you uh, when you started the session, I just uh, updated it. Since sites that I'm working on, it was a project that I started during the GDSC Solution Challenge 2021. Oh, then nice. I uh, on to further. I, I, it's something I'm passionate about, and I really want to get. So I've sent the link sites online. So I just look at how I can do the the uh, mobile application using Flutter. Since uh, I already have the mobile app in Flutter, the web app is in kind of in HTML. So I was just looking at my design into Flutter. So yeah, Perfect. I did this just, I just did, yeah. Perfect, that's amazing. But you see, now that now you're presenting yet another case for building a Flutter web application. You already have an existing mobile application and then now you're moving it over or transitioning it to the web or having like a, a, a web companion for your mobile web application. So that's amazing. So, so thank you so much for sharing. I hope you take this. Th there's a lot of potential in this one. I see already things coming together. So please continue. Don't stop. Continue uh, uh, building on this Flutter web application because there's a lot of potential. And of course, good luck to you and your project. 
and congrats on 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 being part of the you know the solutions challenge for you know for uh, uh and and like this is this is a great amazing and it's looking really good so there's a lot of potential please keep forging ahead congrats to you and of course thank you for being part of our sessions you know we saw you uh throughout the session of course and being part of this amazing event so thank you thank you so much for uh for your submission uh perfect let's continue on the next one uh the uh next is david the, uh, david orejovi remember his COVID report remember from last time i think we're gonna just show it one more time because it was, it was an amazing execution so thank you again david for sharing this amazing pro and i see that you actually added more stuff so guys he did he actually even continued uh bringing up uh, uh you know elevating his game bringing his a game he's even adding the same thing that i was going to add to this design he added animation to the logo i was going to do that he did it i didn't have to tell him he did animations of the images i was going to do that he did it he's an amazing uh you know promising young uh, flutter developer uh, and and i like uh, his work and the fact that he was able to take the design that i provided and definitely make it his own take it all the way and the cool thing is actually hooked up to real data folks like this is already pulling real data from uh you know from the api so thank you thank you david uh for sharing uh, let's open up your mic please speak about the project this is looking amazing brother this is looking really good so can you tell us a little bit more about this experience good morning roman good morning kelvin good morning everybody so good morning okay for me okay it was just the the, the desire to learn more and to grow i think that is what just gave me the eagerness to learn how to do this then i'll just check and find something to do then also your work okay i think i look i looked at your previous work and they inspired me so just took inspiration from different work and just added i added them to form a new a new web app this is awesome okay. this i also is, added i was gonna, I was gonna added go ahead go ahead sorry go ahead Okay, I, I added responsiveness to it so you can reduce it and see. Are you serious? Oh, come on, man. Yes. Come on, man. No, come on. Oh, my God. Look at this guy. Man, I can't with you, man. This is amazing. You actually did the design. You followed the design to the T. Dude, you're taking my words away, man. This is really cool. Yeah. Look, you actually did exactly what I was expecting from this design. So again, kudos to you, David. This looks amazing. I hope you, people can actually even consume this web, uh, this Flutter web application, because there's real valid information to be displayed in here. So this looks amazing. I love the execution. I love that you made it like very mobile friendly. And look, when you expand it, it becomes you actually taking advantage of the real estate because it's a full Flutter web application. But then when you shrink it, you actually make it look and feel like a mobile application by providing navigation in place because this is a tailored experience for a smaller screen. So, uh, David, you you are out of this world, man. This is great, amazing stuff. And of course, we're glad that we serve as inspiration for your project. This is flawless execution for you. Ten. 10 stars for you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. I was going to ask you, what challenges did you face? But this looks very like you, you were <laughs> cruising through it. But anyway, you want to share any any challenges that you may have faced? Yes, yes. There, there, there were quite a number of challenges. Like, there were many. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> there were many challenges. So, I think one of the challenges was when I was about to implement the API and make it work and change. I think I had a lot of issues there. I see. So what I had to do was I had to save everything in a list. Then perfect. Then I it, it is going to check what the person selected. Then if that thing is containing it, then it's just display the other data. It. So trying to get that was kind of hard. And the animation. Well, I'm not. I'm not too used to animation, so learning the an animation too was another thing for me. I'm glad that you were able to use all of those elements. You see, you're bringing all of those elements into a very clean execution. Like you didn't have to pollute the web, the the Flutter web application with a lot of crazy stuff. No, very subtle animations, 
make it very different and make it very nice. Look how the the logo like it's just re uh, revolving in there. This image is pulsating. You see, you're bringing all those elements into your design. I love the execution. Again, you grab the design and you execute it exactly the way that it was expected. I love the responsiveness in here. You made it very seamless. Even though you said that you may have had issues, but this is flawless. This is giving real information about that. You're you're providing the information. You're providing value. Even this check symptoms, I was going to go for exactly the same thing, like just clicking and then doing that. I love the way that you're that you did that you did it. This is something that you know you could actually promote there. I say, hey folks, look, this is a, a Flutter web application that provides very valuable information and people can consume it. So you are already putting something out there in the world for people to consume something really valuable. Congratulations to you. Of course, you automatically qualify. You're gonna get your certificate and good luck to you for the raffle that is coming up. But anyway. Thank you so much for being part of this community and for sharing amazing work like this. Kudos Thank to you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else wants to share? Yeah, I think Roman, uh, Susa, I think Susa had the one. He, he probably skipped. Oh, sorry. Uh, he had, an, uh, I did the, wasn't this the one that I did? Let me open it up again. Oh, he had, uh, he had one and then he did this one. Okay, got it. Sorry. This is the one. Okay. So this is your 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 definite uh, web, right? The, uh, let's we can bring Sosu again to mention it. So this is the uh, web application that you're that you're building, right? Yes, yes. And yeah. this is the definite uh, your uh, you know the the URL for that. Your the other one is the 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 Flutter web app for your mobile application, right? Yes, yes. Got it. See, it's coming out very very nice. So it's coming out very nice. And I would say, for example, like all of these elements that you have on this one, that you can move over to the other one, and then you just continue learning on doing that. It, you can have this exact experience uh, over in in Flutter, and it will look exactly the same. But I, I like the fact that you already have something going. Like you already have a web app, uh, you know, and it's already out there. Uh, and if you now want to then have the Flutter uh, web app version. You can do that in no time as well. So again, congratulations to you one more time, uh, and and thank you, thank you for sharing. I, I I apologize for skipping that, but but yeah, you guys have created amazing work, and I love it. Uh, this is great stuff. So thank you, thank you so much for sharing. Feedback on kind of like developing this using the web and then developing the flat app. I'm I'm looking forward to the day that matured the flatter web is matured enough to go completely web because the difficulty i had in setting up that layout in html and css kind of difficult but it took me close to like five minutes to set up what i just did in flatter so like i'm just waiting for the day for it to thank you thank you like, that's a I'm great testimonial <laughs> Yeah, that's a great yeah. testimonial, Sosu. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. And that's something that, you, you know, people like you who are on the trenches and building real web applications and mobile applications and Flutter, it, you know, this is a testimonial. It is easy to lay out, to build like uh, layouts. And like you, I am very hopeful that Flutter could become one day like the one of the, you know, uh, let's say a competitive uh, platform for building legit full-blown web applications. We're getting there, brother. Just stay there, be patient. I know we're going to do it. And, you know, why not? Just one single code base that you can actually publish for multiple platforms. I also want to see Flutter being the one, you know, so I can develop Windows applications, Mac OS applications, uh, Linux applications, all of that. One single code base and also mobile and web. This is amazing. So thank you again. So that was an amazing testimonial. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, anybody else, uh, again, remember, you can feel free to share your projects. If you don't want to share, that's totally fine because maybe you still want to finalize it, but other folks might benefit from all of your experience. Remember this session was mostly to show you how, uh, how Flutter web, how mature it is, how cool it is to build Flutter web applications. And of course, for free, having, a you know, a published application a free domain, a free hosting. I mean, you can't beat that. So thank you. Thank you for those of you who have uh, shared uh, with their project. So great. Um, I see a comment in there. There's any project on this Flutter Web's open source to share it with us, please. Yes, exactly. Like I'm encouraging folks to share your uh, creations uh, with us uh, in Flutter. So great. So let's proceed. Again, as you're completing your project, 
or just doing something simple and still updating, we're going to give you that chance. We're going to continue with the session so that then uh, we're going to give you a chance. So after that, after I wrap up the, the next uh, um, block of activities, then we're going to do the raffle and uh, you know we're going to give you a chance for you to still publish whatever you have in uh you know to firebase hosting and then we can see it and do the raffle so thank you thank you so much so let me show you again we're gonna proceed uh yeah so we're gonna continue now <laughs> uh paul says he's embarrassed paul no you, anything you have man anything you have you can just share it you don't have to be embarrassed i you know you you have amazing credentials you're an amazing uh you know developer cloud expert uh, you know, so many badges you could use, like, uh, you know, we could use your expertise in there. So it'd be great if you could do, you know, show us uh, your skills in that front. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, great. So what, what, what do we see? Okay, uh, let's continue. If we have any other, uh, any other links, please drop them while I then show uh, the, the current one that I'm that I'm working on. So let me just, um, let me just run the application. Let me show you what is coming out. So flutter run minus the Chrome. Remember, this is just to run uh, your current project in, in Chrome. And then I'm going to show you uh, how it's coming out. So all of you are actually exceeding my expectations. You guys are creating amazing work. You're taking your uh, executions to the next level. So please, please continue sharing. Please continue publishing. And not just uh, for this event, beyond this. See, now it's asking me for a new Flutter uh, version of Flutter. I'll, I'll take care of that later. I just want to uh, congratulate you again on your execution. Make sure that after this session, you continue building Flutter web applications so that then you can, uh, you know, um, you know, build your portfolio, build more Flutter web apps, get more knowledge, and and continue increasing, uh, you know, your knowledge in the Flutter web. So this is the way that the, you know, the Flutter Dev Camp Flutter web application is coming out. Remember, like we are, you know, we're creating like the official Flutter Dev Camp 2022 Flutter web application where we have a couple of banners. We have some banners with some animations and whatnot. Uh, just like you guys, I am also introducing some a level of responsiveness. As soon as you like shrink the screen, for example, you see like some things like rearranging themselves. You see things like adjusting appropriately, and then it's looking much better for that type of uh, 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 for that type of experience. And then you see how when you stretch it, now we take advantage of the whole real estate. If let's say you want to test it on a mobile device, let's say let's test it on a how it will look like on a, let me go over here and then I will say what it will look like on an iPhone 12. So this is what it will look on an iPhone 12. And then if you click on the menu, you see now is where I'm gonna be introducing like links. So we can, uh, exactly what uh, what David did, like he added navigation within the page so that he can uh, navigate to other pages. That's exactly what I'm trying to accomplish here. And then if I, for example, now leverage the, let's say the full application, you see, that every panel now shows expanded uh, fully. So these are the things that, again, are always good to take into consideration when you're building your Flutter web application. Keeping responsiveness in mind, providing a great experience, a very engaging experience. So uh, let's proceed. So now what I'm gonna do is wrap up. Again, remember, we're gonna, we were mentioning how to prepare this for prime time. Let's say my application is fully uh, developed. Now I want to, just clean it up, make sure that I do have a, a proper execution on this project so that then when I put it out there, when people see it, it will look really cool. They will, got, they will have, have like a splash screen. They won't get this like white screen that shows at the beginning. All of those things you can take care of. Those are the things that give your, your Flutter web application that signature of cleanliness, like very uh, clean and professional execution. Let's take care of that right now. Um, so perfect. Okay. So let's proceed now and let me show you how to tackle, uh, some of those things. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, uh, address the issue of the, uh, you know, leveraging the lifecycle API off flutter web so I can create a, a, like a splash screen so that you don't see that white screen at the beginning. How do we do that? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you here in my design. What I am going to do is actually, I'm going to create like a launch screen and I am going to use a, a simple image, like a regular JPEG or a regular PNG so that I can use it as the logo that I'm going to show in, before the Flutter web application gets loaded. And then I'm going to introduce like a, a launch screen. 
And the great thing about Flutter Web is that Flutter Web allows you to tap into the life cycle of your of your of the core uh, web application, so that then you can introduce those type of things like a, a launch screen before the Flutter Web application. Let me show you how that works. So if you go here uh, to your project, and then you find the web folder, you know that you have here a uh, let, let me I'll close all of these so that you can see it. You have a, uh, in the in the main application, right? You have uh, the web folder. The web folder is what gives you is what gives you the main basic elements, so that then this uh, your Flutter web application will be published as a you know web application. So here you have like icons that you can use to replace it, so that when your users add it as a launch screen or you add, they add it as a Pro, as, a, um, as a progressive web application, then you have like cool icons so that when they add it to the home screen, they, it looks like a mobile web application. I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. That's exactly what you're gonna get in that the type of experience that your, uh, your users of your Flutter web applications are expecting from your web app. So you get two icons that you need, that you need to replace, one like much larger and one much smaller. This is mostly like for like, uh, for applications that are gonna be deployed like on a, on Safari, like using like your uh, uh, your iOS. And then this one is like for Android devices. Also, you get some other, uh, you know, uh, type of um, applications. Some of these are even used, for example, like the Favicon, it's actually used for, for here. So if when you deploy your Flutter web application, let's say to the web, you see here, this is already published in, um, this is already published in Firestore, and in, 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 I'm sorry, in Firebase hosting. You see the icon, and you see that they there's a title. That that's not the title of my of my Flutter application. I don't want that title. I want a nice title, and I want an icon that looks like my application. That way, it looks more legit. It looks more clean. So those are the things that I'm gonna take care of right now, so that you can see that. So changing the title of your web application, changing the icon, and all of that, we're gonna do it in just a minute. So let me just move this over so I can continue. And uh, let me show you. So the, uh, the first thing is like, we can change some of those icons. So I need one, I can go inside of the folder. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna just reveal it in Finder and then I can show you like all of these icons. So if I go to the icons folder, I get this one, the, um, you know, I can uh, get the information on this icon. And if you see, you can get the information. It's just a 192 by 192 icon then i have a 512 by 512 and this one i'm pretty sure should be the same thing as 192 by 192 so all these four icons i am going to replace let me show you so i'm going to grab my design you can use any tool remember you can use any tool for like replacing the icon so let's say if i'm going to make this the icon of my application i am going to then uh grab this uh you know this icon i'm just going to make another copy of this I am going to create a 192 by 192 icon. So I'm going to, let me do it again. I can trick the whole thing to a 192 by 192 icon. So I have uh, 198. Okay, so let me just make it a 192 by 192. There you go. So I have, I need a 192 by 192. Now I need a 512 by 512. Uh, what is the other? Uh, 512, yes. So I do a 512, let me do it again. I do a 512 by 512. And because I didn't do it correctly, let me do it again. 512 by 512, that's all it needs to be. So let me make it a 512, there we go. So I need a 512 by 512 and a 192 by 192. I will replace those icons that are part of the web. And now even when I show it on my, on my web application, as a, as a, you know, kind of like a, it will look like native when I add it as the home screen of my iOS uh, device, or I add it as a, you know, like as a progressive web application um, in in my Android. You don't have to do anything. Literally, you don't have to do anything to make it a progressive web application. The only thing that makes a, a web application, a progressive web application, is this file right here, the manifest. So you see, you already have all these constructs as part of your Flutter project. So the one of the things that the manifest contains 
is the name of your application. It also has the, you know, the start URL, the background color. So all these properties that are here in the manifest.json are part of the, of, the, of the configuration or the settings that make any Flutter web application a progressive web application. You will get it without like the address bar. It will look like full screen. It will look like a mobile application. And of course, then you're going to use like the icons also to load it so that it makes it look like a mobile application. So let's continue. Let me save these two images, right? I'm going to save these two images as the, you know, like the, the icons, the corresponding icons in there. So all I have to do is just replace them. So I'm going to say export selected. I am going to go to those two icons and replace those. So I have my Flutter, uh, Flutter Def Cam. I'm going to go to the web. And you see the icons right here. I have the 192 and the 512. So let's start with those. So I'll do the 192 first. I will, let me let me make sure that it got replaced. So if I go to here, uh, which one did I do? Okay, I think I didn't pick the right one. Sorry about that. Let me go back again. And then I say um, export selected. Let me make sure that I'm actually targeting this folder right here. Let me go. Um, Oh, I, oh I, it just it just went up. That's what it did. Sorry, sorry about that. Let me go to the Flutter Flutter Dev Camp. It just got saved up here. I need to drag it inside of my inside of the icons and and drop it in there. So I'm, I'm I can generate them there, but then I'll, I'll just move them over. I think they just got uh, added outside of my uh, folder. So let the it's outside of the web. Let me make sure that I'm in the right folder because I think I may not be. I can I can drop them in the downloads. I'm just gonna grab the name. Uh, and then just save it like that. So I'll just grab this name, I'll put it in the downloads, then I'll just replace them. So I'll just say, let me save it like this as a PNG, that's perfect. Then I'm gonna grab the next one and I'm gonna say uh, export selected. The other icon is the 512 one, right? So the icon 512. So I need this name, I'll grab this guy, I will, I'll put it in the downloads as the 512 one. So I'll do this and export it. I need the other name, this one right here. So I'm going to just grab these. Also export my icon, it has, it has to be 512. Uh, and ensure that it's actually, uh, you know, those dimensions as well. So make sure. And I need this one, uh, this guy right here. So let me just also rename, grab this and replace this one by the icon uh 192 so the 192 one there we go perfect so yeah i'm gonna replace it that's okay got it so now uh or i think it was this one okay i think it, it may have been this one but let, let me try so if i go to the downloads i do have all my uh, images in here i'm just gonna drag them over yeah i need i need one more i need this one uh, this one, the icon 92. So let me do rename. Let me make sure I'll just grab the name from this one. Let me export it as a 192 um, image also. Icon 192. And now all I'm going to do is just replace my images. Just drag them over. Oh, sorry. I can, I can do this also. Reveal in Finder and just drop them in here. So let's go back again. I will drag my icons in there. I'll replace them all. And now if you see, they are here with my icons. Perfect. The favicon is the only one that I haven't done. Let's do that one. Favicons are usually, uh, let me see. They're usually like 16 by 16. Like this one is the one that shows in the, on the web page up there, like on the tab. So you see 16 by 16. So I can do that 16 by 16, even though it will look horrible, but I'll still do it just so that, uh, you know, you see it. See, I'll just go and do the 16 by 16. It's too tiny, but still let's uh, let's do it. And then I'll just have to call it, of course, favicon.png. So I'll do that in the downloads. I'll say uh, favicon.png, that's okay. We can move this over. And now I'll grab my favicon and replace it over here. Yes, replace. Perfect. Now I think we, I should be good up to a certain point. Is that the old icon is still showing, 
let's reload the application and let's see if they're coming up. So at least let's see if they're coming up over there. So I'm gonna kill it. I'm going to again do Flutter Run Web. So you saw how simple it was. You just use like your, you know, you can use, hey, Abhishek, uh, thank you for joining again, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, so now we're just replacing the images, relaunching the application, seeing if the favicon actually shows up there and those same icons, you're gonna see them as part of your, um, you know, of that. So while this is, while this is building, um, if you guys wanna take like a, you know, a couple of minutes break if you if you want to do while this is building some of you want to take a break to grab water or do something um let's take one like a couple of minutes break before we proceed to the next uh session if you guys want to do that i'm just going to be here answering any questions and waiting for this to reveal and of course you see that already the icon just got uh, replaced by the new one so let's take a few minutes uh, five minutes break if you guys want we're gonna pick it up again at 11.06, uh, just, I'm just gonna ask, uh, uh, you know, so for you guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, remember, we're uh, doing the raffle right after this. We are just wrapping up the series, prepping the application to be published, cleaning it up, make sure that it looks really good and all of that. So please go ahead, you can take a break. We're uh, resuming right back at 11.06. Any questions from anybody while that's going on, please let me know, okay? And all I wanted just to verify, you know, while you guys are um, taking a quick break, is just making sure that, again, the images got replaced. And if you saw, the images got replaced. Great. So, uh, uh, David, uh, he says, I hosted another web app and I was working on just now. Perfect. Bring it over. While, while we're waiting and people are uh, taking a break, uh, you can, is it the same one or you just dropped another one? So if you did, you can just, if you're working on something, anything you have, all of you, if you're working on something right now and publishing, drop the link right now, because that is what's going to get you, uh, you know, in the door to get your certificate, uh, certificate of completion to get qualified for the, for the Flutter Flow raffle. So make sure that you drop your stuff. David, uh, uh, Imad, you're saying you're trying to share your project. Uh, are you publishing uh, to the web? Are you providing a link? Uh, Dana, you're working on an app with Flutterflow. Uh, could you, uh, yes, we can definitely help you. Let me um, open this link that David's providing. Uh, David just provided this one. He's calling it smart form something something. Oh, you're, you're doing this one also? Very cool. Is this based on a template? Are you doing this? uh on your own yes oh perfect Let, let's answer questions from folks i like the way that this is looking david this is, has a great start oh this looks like a like a working form in here that looks pretty cool you know very cool see you're doing this is this a uh a david uh or a Joby? is this a template is this uh Something that you're using, something that you're building yourself. Because uh, this looks very good. This looks very good. There's a bunch of great uh, templates out there. Um, uh, Iman, we can help you. Uh, Danai, we can help you as well. So let me, uh, yeah, Danai, so you're, you're bringing, you're, doing, you're using Flutterflow. That's awesome. So let me bring your link. And Flutterflow, again, is great for, for fast prototyping. I definitely suggest it. Uh, uh, for, again, if you want to create really cool stuff, you can just grab all that code, bring it over to uh, Visual Studio Code, and you can continue there. So for me, it's taking a little bit to load. Um, um, so, I mean, Dana, if you want to share your yourself, that would be great. Let me know if you want to share. I can stop sharing, and then you share yours. Let me grab uh, Mahendran's link. He's having an issue with the responsiveness. Let's take a look. Um, so, uh, so if you're saying that whenever I shrink your application and you're doing this, for example, so far, what I see that you have, th this looks pretty good. How low you want me to bring it? Do you want me to, I like what you're doing with the text. I like what you're doing with the text. Uh, if I show, for example, um, the let's say if i not view source i'm sorry 
if I just say inspect and I do, for example, like mobile, is that what you want me to try? Like I can do, I can try to simulate it on an iPhone. This looks good. Like even on an iPhone uh, 12 Pro, this looks good, uh, Mahendra. So what is the issue that you're facing? I like the way that it's coming out. So uh, uh, all you need to do is, for example, just make sure that you properly test it on those breakpoints on, for example, like, you know, on an iPhone device. Then in between, that's fine that maybe it may look a little weird, but as long as you do have your breakpoints, um, you know, well uh, structured and you can just change um, like the information on how it gets laid out at different at, at various breakpoints, you're good to go. You can take a look at the project. Uh, my pro okay, go ahead, Mahendra. Uh, can you speak? Uh, so, um, facing issue one of the re responsive text, so text is the um, major issue on my creation, my web application. So, yes, uh, text is to using, go ahead. I tried using fixed uh, media using media query, but many others uh, way to fix that issue. Uh, Text is always an issue. Text is always an issue. That's why I try not to fight it too much. So for example, mm -hmm. instead of, I like the way that you're doing that you're actually shrinking the text. The way that I do it, I don't fight text too much. So what I do is like at various breakpoints, instead of resizing the text at, at every pixel, like just resizing it, all I try to do is just let it wrap. I try to let it wrap and at different various breakpoints, I just change the font size. Because, you know, it, it, not all the time I want my font to completely, like, resize with every pixel and just change at every point. You can just keep it simple and just change the font size at a given breakpoint and then just let it wrap. Because that, 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 you know, you, you have to let text, like, flow. Don't let text, like, completely resize with the, with the screen. You can just let it wrap nicely. You know, it can break into multiple lines. You can apply ellipses in some uh, occasions, but just don't fight it too much. What I what I see that you did there is, is good. What you did is good, but I would say don't fight it too much. Let the text flow. It's kind of like water, pretty much. You just let it flow, and then you see that your your structures won't be like so rigid. But what I see in here, uh, like on an iPhone 12, like uh, th this is this is pretty good. It's just that I see that this issue right here that is blocking maybe the, the bottom yes. piece. Uh, uh, but other than that, the way that you can, uh, again, like fix that, remember, is just making sure that you leverage the media queries, make sure that you're not, uh, uh, you know, you're taking account of that screen. Don't use fixed sizes. Use like relative sizes, use like percentages, use padding. And, and like I said, you let the content flow. Don't force it into fixed sizes and just take advantage of the real estate on the screen. Okay, so uh, but, but it's looking it's looking good again, like I said. Uh, Danai, would you like to share your screen uh, if you want to? I'm going to stop sharing. And now, again, I believe we're back online for those of you who came from their breaks or whatnot. Um, can somebody bring uh, Danai up and she can share her screen so that we can um, help you out, if, if anything? I want, I want to see also, like, how folks are using uh, Flutterflow. Oh, this looks cool. Okay. So what issues are you having here in Flutterflow? Right. So probably the biggest one is that I created and uh, I mistyped my email. Mm -hmm. um, and now I cannot look in back uh, because I don't have the email that I used for it. But anyway, um, so I'm trying to build this app for Android and iOS mm -hmm. and I've worked on it for many hours and I've lost everything but anyway uh, but um yeah um the text is not sewing so here I had text for each of these things and yeah. here there was text and here mm -hmm. there were buttons and stuff mm -hmm. um so this is also from a template uh, but yeah, I'm not sure why the they have, the, kind of changed the images here as well, Got and it. it's not working. Go back to the design. Go back to Flutterflow's uh, like the to the workspace, and let's take a look. Because, but anyway, I love uh, the way it's coming out. Uh, you're using a template. Yes, that is the way to go about it because you don't want sometimes in certain occasions you don't want to start from scratch. You want to leverage, you know, the the great work from the community. So, my be that the text is white and white. I was gonna, I was gonna say that. 
try to select to see if you have when you select is blue and it shows if you have text or not. yes can, can you, you can know you, can you share, can you share again yeah can you share again tonight and then let's take a look because i wanted to see like the design you said oh you said that you can't get back into your into the project because of the email I cannot know, uh, but I can I can log in. Yeah, because I've lost the email that I created the account with, so I cannot. How about okay. because I went back and I created a new account with my Google account with my Gmail account, so now I've kind of lost it. But try I, to I, share I, your I, screen again and try to select where you have text to see uh, if on blue you can see white text. So this is a template that they used. Okay. Um, and you are using your actual Gmail account here. You know this Gmail account. Yeah, that's my, uh, my Gmail okay. account, yes. Okay, I see. Oh, interesting. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of... But you know what? Uh, I know the folks from For Flutterflow. I have a couple of uh, folks in there. I can find that out for you. You say that you lost the account. You don't know which is the account. Is that what it is? Or you... you the can't... email, yeah. Oh, interesting. I used to, to be... 100% honest with you. I just wanted to try out this tool. Oh, I see. You wanted and to try out, but then, yeah, I see. I use this one 10 minute emails. Um, oh, I see. <laughs> now I've lost I it. And I see. Now you lost it. Okay. Wow. What a, what a shame. But that was coming out so good. Oh, my God. Can, it was, you, yeah. Can't you write to try to replicate that uh, experience little by little? Again, I think you're going to have to talk from the Try to select there the text where you have to see if uh, on top of uh, the white. Try to select where you don't see the text. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't let it select. Yeah. Ah, not. Uh, you cannot select at all. If you but try you to select. select, no, no, no. To go on the white where you have text. Ah, yeah, no. it doesn't. Yeah, doesn't let you like. Yeah, doesn't let it yeah let it okay. That's a, it's a, it's a Here there was text. Because well. many times when I see like this, I select it, and if I have, I go and change the color of the text. But here you can see that there is uh, there are different like. There are the options are there, so that might be the issue. It could be yeah. the, it could be the theme, like the, the the theme of the template. Like maybe the theming it has like maybe a color that so but but it, it proves to you that okay, where did you find that template? Is that template in here in Flutterflow? Or did you have yes, the yeah. No, no, it was uh, one of the Flutterflow ones. Got it, okay, okay. Because it would be good to actually even go to that same template. Take a look oh, at you know it. what? Maybe I do have it here because it is. Oh, you, you published it here in your Flutter uh, in Firebase? Yes. Well, but you published it. The thing is that I don't know whether you'll be able to recover that code. Like the, the code that is in there, like the actual editable code, uh, it would be. I don't know whether you might can... be able to find the email, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I see. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, that was oh, that was very clever. Can you try then doing the the yeah? Go to the project where you. Oh, I'm I'm thinking about like the. Is this is that was that the one? That that's the one. Yeah. Okay. How about the the email? Is is that the one? No, it's not. Oh, no. oh that's it. Oh, because the project of the email is one thing, and the and the and the and the, and the email of Flutterflow is another email. I guess. Anyway, I'll just keep looking. Otherwise, I'll just do everything. Well, yeah, I'll just do everything. Got it. But no, this is this is good. I, I like. I see now. Uh, you know how useful Flutterflow is. You you're cranking like developing Flutter applications left and right. Please keep it up. I love. And you it. can upload photographs, and it's really cool. This template's really cool. You can upload. Very nice. It has like a like a user login thing. I just I, I just want to build an and build an applications for application for a symposium that um, a part of this group that of promotes STEM education for women and we're um, we're just organizing a symposium and I just want to build an application for it uh, and it kind of well this is for a wedding wow. thing so but I cool. think it's you can use it for something like conferences and stuff. Definitely. And uh, were you able to connect it to Firebase? Is that the login part that it has, right? Like you can connect it to Firebase, right? Yeah, it connected to Firebase and it, it shows that actually uh, just these are the ones that I tried and nice. it kind of look, kind of stores well, all the information. So that's cool. Very, very nice. Very nice. I'm so glad to see like uh, someone already using it in the wild and, and definitely getting 
uh, you know, really good results from it. So, so folks, there it is. Another uh, happy Flutterflow user. Not so happy because you lost your account, but other than yeah. that, I see the great things that you've been doing in there. So thank you for sharing. That was really cool. That was really good stuff. I'll just I'll try the 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 color of the fonts that might be. Sufficient. Yeah, try that exactly, and see if you can find that same template so you can uh, you know uh, rebuild that that stuff that you're building that the STEM application. That was very cool. Thanks. Uh, great. Th thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, who do we have with another link? Uh, David Orijovi, you're, oh, you're providing the GitHub. That's awesome for Imad to take a look. Great. Uh, Imad, you are having an issue on the, on the flutter on which one is it that you're having an issue? Can we bring uh, Imad up uh, uh, either Kevin or Linda? I just wanted to see if Imad wanted to share maybe an issue that he may be having with his uh, application. You said that you're having an issue. Yeah, go, go ahead, Imad. How you doing, man? All right. Hello. <laughs> hey. Hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for giving me uh, the, the opportunity to, to speak. So, uh, yeah, uh, I just have a problem here with my projects. Uh, but but I have a lot of, a lot of several projects on Flutterflow. So not, not just one, okay? Yeah, I, <laughs> so see, I see that the stuff that you've been doing in Flutterflow, the ones that you show me look very good. So you are another yeah. good Flutterflow user. Continue, please. Yeah, yeah so what I'm trying now is just to uh, to execute the command of uh, Flutter, Flutter Build Web. But that's uh, but that's the the issue. So as I as I gave it to you in this message, as you see here. So I see the message that he's talking about like a uh, a, a specific pro oh the Riley oh no I said Riley go that is your your application right, but then your your. I can share my screen if you want to see. Please yeah can you share it? Yeah please? okay. All right so give me one second. Uh, because you see me now, uh, all right. Yeah, so you see me do. now, yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, to run another project, but I will I will execute this. Uh, give me just one second. What is it? Uh, I think it's here. Yeah. All right. So I will now uh, join this. Okay, just like this, get the packages. Got it, yeah, so always yeah. you do Flutter Pub. Flutter yes. Pub. Got it. Yeah. So that's the, the issue, as you see. Depends on Flutter, you can have Riley go depends on validation. Flutter test for, is forbidden. So Riley goes depend on Flutter test from SDK. There's okay. Go back to the of pub spec that YAML. Can you go to the pub spec that YAML on the left? Uh, okay. Like right here, uh, the pub spec that very good. Okay, yes. let me scroll down. Let me see what packages mm. you have. Oh, okay. You have a fair amount of packages. There mm. are some packages, unfortunately, I'm going to have to tell you, there are packages that are not supported on the web. So, uh. so your application, because of the dependencies that you have, I see a couple in there that are not built for the web. You may uh. not be able to. In this case, you see, folks, uh, I'm, I'm glad, Iman, that you shared. This is one of the cases where you cannot then deploy to the web. This one yes. is in the way that the only way that you can do it, the only way that you can do it, mm. that you can leverage the code is actually then creating another project. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to bring the, the, the code, you can bring it over and then you yeah. can do like, a, you know, a, a, for example, like these scope it, like make only the stuff that can work on the web, you can make it for the web. But oh. in this particular case, the, because of the amount of packages that you have and the specific packages that don't work on the web yet, yeah. you may not be able to do this for the web. But but yeah, you can create it. For example, I know that you started it on on on. Let's say you started it on Flutter Flow. Yeah. You started importing all those packages. You can preview it, but then you cannot build it for the web because of that specific reason. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. Again, um. Understood. Exactly. That that is because of that. But but it'd be great. Let's say if you. Uh, in the event that you want to uh, build this application for the web, you just build another project and then you can just bring the code over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because there is an option in, in, in first of flow to uh, to target the web. There you that's go. Exactly. Yeah, that is very, uh, that is, uh, that is possible. And maybe, uh, maybe I, uh, maybe I need, uh, you know, some, uh, some minutes to make it very, very, uh, very fastly. Okay. Got it. And in Flutter, yeah. in Flutterflow, then you can specify 
oh, this is going to be for the web, then it's going to tell you, for example, yes. which packages may work for it, may, may package it, may not. But I like that you're, is this another app? Dang. Yeah, yeah, that's another project. <laughs> it's a lot you're, of. <laughs> you're, 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 you're going crazy, man, building a bunch of apps. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, uh, because I'm working with several pro uh, clients in the world. Right, man, man you're, you're doing good. You see, you and I, you guys are seeing the, the benefits of yeah. workflow for building really great applications that you can build in no time. Yeah, yes, you don't have to yes. go from scratch all the time. It's because you yeah. want to do like very custom experience, but yeah. Flutterflow works very well for all of these. Yeah, but that's, yeah, but but in my experience, so uh, yeah, Flutterflow uh, is very very good for uh, for beginners, okay, and also for uh, for the not developers. But for me, you know, I'm very very focusing to be a Flutter developer. So uh, maybe sometimes it's gonna be hard because you know you really want the skills of of, of, totally. of how to write in high quality of code totally, totally. So, yeah. and and again thank you Iman, for sharing again, yeah, like yeah. i said uh, apologies uh, you know in advance for uh, you know I, i've been a little bit busy. no no no, no. could help you a little more uh, but yeah. please continue on your journey because you're doing great work so yeah. thank you, thank for you sharing, so much uh, one more time uh, i just yeah. wanted to address one comment from the folks here uh, like when when they're doing about like less uh, uh, Alexander, you have an amazing point when you say okay. that the less third party packages you have, the easier it is. That is a good point. Ah, uh, yeah. For uh, Imad, because he's mm. getting to know more Flutter and all of that, and he's building his applications as rapid prototyping and whatnot. It kind of makes sense, real quick. I would go yeah. for the approach of the least packages, the better. Uh, but in some cases, you you know, there's no other way around you know getting one of those packages. But okay. your case is uh, your your statement is very correct. Okay. Uh, for okay. some other folks, again, me, you know me, I like to build stuff from scratch because I like yeah. to like learn how how things work and how they get built. But in in certain cases, you you know you want to build like a very cool app, you know, very quick. You don't yeah, have that time. Yeah, to because just slow. Like, yeah, uh, because in my like, experience, uh, God does. And yeah, so he builds bunch of apps that they all pretty much look similar but just minor tweaks so that is yes. one advantage of doing it that way so again thank you all of you for sharing your sure. experiences i'm gonna i'm gonna continue sharing my screen so that we can wrap okay. up uh the session thank you again imad for sharing uh if you don't mind stop sharing i'm gonna grab the the mic again um and if you go back to listening that'll be great um so um so let's uh yes can we uh, okay, perfect. So I, I need the, okay, so let me start sharing one more time again. Great. Thank you. Thank you again, all of you for sharing. Um, so again, like I was sharing, like I was showing you, I was wrapping up showing the icon in here at the top. So that is one way to do it. The, uh, the other way, remember, is uh, when I told you about the progressive web apps, which are applications that have like a mobile type of look and feel, they, uh, you know, you can actually leverage like um, browser threads and all of that. And you can build like really engaging web applications, but with the power of Flutter, right? So let me uh, continue one more time. Another thing that you can do in your, in your web application is actually change it here in the manifest, some of the things, some of the aspects of your application. For example, here you can change the color, you can change the title and the, in the name of your application. For example, here, the name will be called, for example, Flutter Dev Cam, and the short name I'll also call it Flutter Dev Cam. These the, these uh, labels right here will show when you add your application uh, add uh, to the home screen that they will look like a mobile application. I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Now I'm gonna grab the color of my of the application. I'll probably just grab this uh, you know this uh, color right here, and then I'll make that like the background color of my application so let me just grab and drop it here i'll also make it the theme color you can add a description here i'll just add just say uh uh official official flutter dev camp web app for example you see other things remember we are referring to those icons that i replaced very simple you see there they are and that's all you need to do Ma uh, edit the manifest.json to make your application uh, look more like a, again, like a progressive web app, like a mobile web app. Other things that you can do, of course, is in the index. In the index.html is some of those things that you need to do to actually uh, make your application 
more uh, actually to tap into the life cycle of api of the web uh, construct and then you can build like the splash screen and all of that let me show you how you do that so one thing of course i'm going to change uh the title of the application it won't say flutter dev camp it will say it won't look like that it will say flutter dev camp i want it to look much better right um so again you see we're referring to the manifest.json here so when i add it as a uh, added to the home screen, it will be added like this. And then the other things that I'm going to do is actually address the issue of the of that launch screen of the you know blank screen in here. So how do we tackle that? Let me show you. For those of you who are familiar with web uh, you know web development, it's a matter of just adding CSS to this index.html and just adding the icon in there. Let me show you how to do that. So for example, here, this is the, the main script that gets loaded. This is what actually bootstraps the Flutter, uh, the Flutter web application. And here you can actually intercept the call so that then you can do uh, anything with, your, uh, with, with, the, with the web part of your Flutter web application. Like here you see that it loads the service worker. Then after the service worker loads, then your Flutter application initializes. So that's how it works. So then the way that the, the, the way that we're going to do it is we're going to now change, for example, we're going to, I'm going to add some CSS in here. Check this out. So I can say, you can add it like as a CSS file, but I'm just going to hard code it real, uh, real quick, just so that you can see it here. So I'm going to say styles and here, I'm going to say body, like in the body of the page, I'm going to add a background color. So I'm going to say background color, and I'm going to add that, you know, uh, hex value, which is that green color in the background. So let me save, reload, and now you will see when I uh, rebuild my application again. Let me let me kill it and let me start it again because it needs to be rebuilt. Uh, so when you see it rebuild again now, because I am adding a color that applies to the whole page. Now the the screen when you load it initially it won't be white; it will be green because I am actually tapping into the HTML and, and CSS aspect of the application so that then I can, uh, 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 you know, eliminate that white screen that shows in there because that is actually just the page loading. A Flutter web is trying to load in the background and then it takes over for the whole screen and then it, uh, it just renders itself in the whole page. So let me show you now uh, another thing. So while that is building, let me show you other things that I'm going to do. So inside of the body, you see there's the script. I am going to add a div and then this div is going to contain the logo in the middle. Uh, David, for your COVID application, this is what I was referring to. Uh, uh, see, it's saying body background color because I did it wrong. Sorry about that. So let me let me fix that. So in this in the styles, I wanted to say body background color and add that background color. So let me make sure that I, I am applying that correctly. Let me rebuild this. Let's do it one more time. So it's not picking up. Let me let me do it again. So here in my in the head, I am adding, of course, the CSS. Uh, I am, I want to apply it to the whole body, and I want to apply the background color of you know this particular color. So let's uh, let's do it one more time. In the div, what I'm going to do in the div, I'm going to show you to you in a, I'm going to show it to you in a minute. I'm just going to add like the image in the you know so that it appears at the center of the screen so that it can show it to me. So let's uh, let's try this again. So I'm adding. I can even do it. For example, uh, let me save this again. Reload. Okay, perfect. So let me let me show you how I did it on this other project. So I can definitely uh, take a look at it. Just give me a minute. Because right now, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I am loading the, you know, that I'm loading the, the, the color in the background. Let me make sure that I'm actually targeting it correctly so that I can uh, see that in my style. So remember, all these changes need to be done on the HTML, on the rendering HTML, so that when you build it, those changes appear uh, in the build version of it. So make sure that you always apply that to the you know to the index.html so let me show let me show you how I'm doing it in in this other application so the way that I'm doing it is 
I'm typing styles. It's style. Sorry about that. So I have this typo in here. Now let me rebuild, and now you will see it. So when I reload, well, not right now. I'm going to have to kill it again because every time I build it, remember what it does. It grabs the files from here, from this web, and then puts it in here inside of this web. So every time I make one change of that kind, I have to rebuild one more time so that it so that it loads appropriately. So while that is loading, let me let me add other things. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna add a diff with a with a ID and then I'm gonna call it let's say loading icon for example. And then that loading icon will be this icon that I want to show I'm sorry, I'm going to make it as a PNG because I want to make it transparent. I'm going to grab this image. I'm going to call it loading icon as a PNG. Perfect. And now all I'm going to do is just drag that icon image. Let me bring it over. This uh, loading icon image is going to be part of the of the whole web package. So I drag my loading icon at, on the web on the web folder. It should be right here. There it is, loading icon. So my application is still building. Okay, I think it's building right now. Okay, it's already okay. So it's still building. Let me now add the icon. The body, I have the icon, that's perfect. Now I want to add the icon. So the icon I added as an ID because this is the ID. Now I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, um, oh, okay, now it is. It's loading. You see the green screen. And then after this, then the application will load. So, okay, there it is. And now I'm going to show the icon in the middle, okay? So let's show the icon in the middle. Um, okay, so now I'm going to grab this uh, icon and I'm going to say background or or i can actually just load it as a background image so i'm going to say background right background i can say background like background image i can say background image or i just say background url and then i'm going to load the image that is right here loading icon.png right and i'm going to say background position i can say background position uh, center or, uh, and then I say background, uh, I can say background, uh, repeat. I don't want it to repeat, right? So I can say background, uh, repeat, no repeat. So let's start seeing, and I can actually even add dimensions to it. I'm gonna say, uh, you know, with, uh, let's say, uh, like, well, let's say 150 pixels and the height 150 pixels. So let's see how it loads. We're going to have to, let me see if it actually, yeah, I'm going to have to rebuild one more time. But at least after I do this, I promise I don't have to do it again. So now we'll just build it one more time. Got it. Okay, so here we go. So now I've added the loading icon right, right here. All I need to do is now adjust it so that it's actually positioned absolute within the page. Um, and all of that. So now it shows in the center. So you will see after I build it, now you see that I'm tapping into that loading functionality of it. I've already changed the title. Once we load it, I'll show you now how when it when we load it, it's gonna it's gonna be um, it's gonna be uh, loading the icon in there. We're gonna adjust it. Then we'll publish it, and then you'll see now how my application looks more uh, you know polished. It looks like a you know, we're, we're, we took care of that white screen that was showing at the beginning, and now it looks more professional. So let's uh, wait for this to build. So it's building. Here we go. And then all I need to do is just tweak the, 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 tweak the application. Okay, here we go. So you see now how the app, see how it shows in there? We need to fix that. But you see at least how the title now, it says Flutter Def Camp, and it has a logo. That's pretty good. And then that image is going to uh, show better now. So let's now make sure that this image is actually position absolute within the body. So I'm going to say here, position absolute. I'm going to say, you know, I can say top 50%. I'm going to tell you how to fix that. 
and left 50 percent i'm going to show you this for a minute i'm going to say uh background uh, uh i'll say background position again and then uh, uh, i'm going to actually yeah i'll say no repeat i'm just going to say background a uh, background size and then the background size i'm going to say cover so that it actually gets uh covered within or there's another option that you can say like contain contain means like the image is going to be contained within that uh within those confines like the uh, 150 by 150 so let me save and reload and then we should be able to see it uh one more time you see now it looks better there so now the image is actually contained within the confines of that but now i want to make sure to line it up better so how do i line it up better so that it looks better see remember i made it 150 by 150 and it's centered within that uh, actually contained within that um container so you need to take uh take into consideration the width of the image so the way that you do it is you do a calc so you're going to calculate 50 percent of the width of the screen and then you say minus half of the size of the image so in this case you do a calculation of 50% of the screen minus, right, 75 uh, 75 pixels, which is half of the of the of the of the of the image, and then that way it lines it up more in the center. So I'm going to save that, reload one more time, and now when you see it again rebuilding, let me reload it one more time. Now you see that the image is actually in the center, and now you have a launch screen. You can actually add an SVG. You can add an animated SVG in there, which is much better. And then you have like a little bit more animation. And now you see how I took care of that white screen that was showing in front. Now it looks much better. Uh, yeah, thank you, Soso. I was, uh, yeah, I should have looked at your at your message. I was saying styles as opposed to style. Thank you so much. So yes, I, I, I did it like that. And now you see that it took care of that. Perfect. You see, now I'm ready to publish. Let's see now if I publish it. How I will it, how I will see it when let's say I load it on my phone when I see it let's say um, as a progressive web application. So why don't we try that? I am going to now kill the application, and I am going to build it first so that I can see this in my um, in uh, on the web. So I'm going to now say Flutter build web dash dash web renderer. And I'm going to say canvas kit. So I'm going to go for the canvas kit. And then I'm going to make sure that it's the canvas kit. I am going to delete the web folder in here. I'll move it to the trash. And I will rebuild one more time. First, you build it. You make your changes. You build. And then that gets that generates a web folder. After the web folder gets generated, then you do the Firebase deploy. And then it should be on Firebase. While that is building, I am going to show my uh, my phone screen because I am going to share um, the screen so that I can load the application inside of uh, inside of Safari. I'm going to load my application and I am going to um, like load my application and then add it as a progressive web application. So I'm going to share my screen using uh, QuickTime. Okay, so uh, I have quick time in here. This is still building. I am going to share my my mobile browser so that you guys can see. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do mobile recording, and then I am going to select my phone. Perfect. And then I am going to show you what it looks like when I add the page uh, as a, you know as a progressive web application on my phone so i'm going to use well not the uh sorry there we go so i'm going to show my phone in here and then that way you will see uh for example i'm going to load my the application in there so just give me a minute i am going to be loading the web application the web version okay so it it, it built now let's do firebase firebase deploy remember you either do firebase deploy or say dash dash only hosting if you have more than one configuration in your Firebase state JSON. In my case, it's only hosting, but that's okay. This is harmless. It doesn't do any difference than doing a Firebase deploy. But if you do this, at least you specify that it's only the hosting aspect that you want to update. So meanwhile, I am going to start loading 
my old application, remember the way that you used to look, it didn't have the logo in here, it's still loading the white screen in there, and it's not uh, like super polished, but it's coming together. But now let's see, after it, do, it does the Firebase deploy, I am going to reload in here, and I am going to access this, uh, this link. So I'm going to send it to myself. Let me send it to myself meanwhile, so that uh, while you guys see this, okay, so it's already deployed. I am going to send the link to myself so I can grab it uh, on my phone and I'm gonna load the application as a progressive web application. So always always be mindful of that, that whenever you add uh, your, um, whenever you add your web as a progressive web application, it will look like a mobile application. So here we are, let's reload. And now you see my published application already with the uh, loading screen. It already has the icon. I am going to drop the, the link in here. Alexander, say, if I remember with CSS, the order is important when defining your properties to avoid surprise overwrite. That is correct. Order is important uh, and it, because that's exactly why it's called CSS. It's cascading. So the styles are cascading. The order is important. Otherwise, you can overwrite other things. Very good point. Perfect. Now you see how when I reload it, the icon shows that, and you see how now it looks like more snappy. Now let's take a look on my phone, how I load this link, and then let's see what it looks like. So I'm gonna open it in Safari. Here it is, this is in Safari, right? It's loading the application and there it is. So it looks much better. Now what I'm gonna do to prove to you that the progressive web app capabilities are already by default, you click on this little icon here, the share icon, you're going to click there and you're going to go where it says um, you can just uh, come over here and you said at, uh, for example, let me see. I think here I should have gotten the ad, it says add bookmark, but it still doesn't come up. So I'm going to have to uh, take a look at that again because here I should have been able to get the, the, the one to say add as a add to home screen. So let me try one more time. Let me make sure that uh the the manifest actually got the uh, got added as well so we have the manifest um i do have okay so display standalone that's okay uh and also in the index.html i do have the let me see i am loading the manifest in here i am loading uh you know we do have the let me see i think i'm missing let me see if i'm missing anything because even with this I should have been able to just get the add to home screen option so that you can get it as a, um, you know, like as a, as a flutter, as a, as a progressive web application. So you need to make sure that, you know, for progressive web applications, whenever you're using, for example, like, uh, let me go again to the link. Actually, let me navigate completely outside of the, of that uh, experience. So let me copy the link one more time. Let me go back here and I'm going to open it straight in Safari. I am going to paste it in here. Let me hit go. And there it is. Okay, now it's, it's actually the experience. I was actually looking at it from the experience of the embedded uh, 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 browser of, uh, of Gmail. So apologies about that. So now you see if I'm gonna add this as a progressive web app, I click again on the share and now you can see it here sorry about that so now i can click add to home screen and you see how even there's an icon there how there's a the icon there you see and it says flutter dev camp right now i'm gonna click done i hit done and now you see it right here in my home screen as if it was an application so now if i tap on it it launches as a mobile application there is no chrome and it fills the whole screen and it looks more like a mobile application so that's why i said and then now if you tap in here it looks like a web like a mobile application i can dismiss it you know i can come back i can move this uh this you know i can delete it i can tap again and you see how the experience looks more like a mobile web application so that is why I, I mentioned to you, make sure that you do strive to accomplish like the responsiveness so that when your users use it as a, you know, a launch it from your mobile phone, 
you get it and it looks like a like a mobile application but you're actually using flutter web so that is the freebie that you get by implementing uh, uh in responsiveness and tapping into the progressive web app capabilities of your flutter web apps by just implementing responsiveness editing the manifest.json make sure that you open it straight from safari or chrome even uh but safari is the one that actually gives you those capabilities more on android you also get it on on chrome but make sure that you edit the manifest.json you load it from a full-blown browser i was actually doing the embedded version of gmail that's why you didn't see the the add to home screen option but you see how cool it was that you get the icon it looks like an app you get the little name and you see like i i, I love it i love it it was like a very seamless experience i hope you guys uh, enjoy that that part right there you see it has the name in there flutter dev camp that's amazing so again any questions around again now preparing your application you see how now i was able to deploy it now is available out there now i continue adding more features to my application and then we can uh you know build very cool engaging flutter web applications i didn't have to go through any store and now you see how i was able to publish it it looks more like a mobile application and i give my users a very seamless experience on uh, on the web great uh any questions uh any questions around that any parting messages that anybody wants to share before now we proceed and do the raffles uh that we that we promised anybody exciting uh again remember this is our last session so now you have your summers all free your saturdays free every summer so that you can enjoy it so i hope you guys uh, amazing uh you know have uh amazing plans uh for that uh ajmal thank you thank you so much uh you, oh you're uh you will learn spanish for uh from previous events oh that's awesome great <laughs> thank you great so let's uh now proceed then if nobody else has anything else to add i just want to again continue thank you um for those of you who stuck all the way through this session is recorded so that you can view it later and you can implement some of these things on your existing flutter web applications um so let's proceed now with wrapping up the session we're going to be doing the raffle for the uh the flutter dev camp um, uh, we're gonna again. We're gonna be. Uh, you're gonna be receiving in the email your certificates of completion um, based on your submissions. But today, or right now, we're also be gonna be uh, raffling the uh, the five premium accounts on Flutterflow. Uh, please stay and uh, stick around right there because we're gonna be doing the raffle. Uh, gracias, Camilo. Gracias, amigo. Gracias por el apoyo siempre. Thank you, Camilo. Is a is a great uh, partner of us. Uh, he's from um, uh, Florida, Toronto. He's been doing great events with the developer community. So thank you, Camilo, for your support as always. Uh, let's now, we're going to stop the recording, but after right after, we're going to be doing the raffle. Just wanted to say for the recording, thank you. Thank you so much for sticking with us through all these four sessions. We're going to see you in the next one. Please watch the previous videos uh, so that you can get more knowledge about Flutter Web and see you on the next one. We hope to continue doing these events in the future like every year we'll probably do it every year so i hope to see you in another future session so thank you so much for joining thank you so much for your support and see you on the next one